Welcome everybody here to our next uh, webinar at uh, JFT Bank and a uh, warm welcome in the name of JFT Bank as well. My name is Stefan Friedrichowski, as always, for the Statistic Radar. That's the topic of today. So what we are actually doing, uh, I will have to mention the date, the 29th of January 2020. Um, and uh, what we are actually doing with the webinar Statistic Radar is looking to the market to the market state at all. So market state would be another title for this kind of webinar. But the main um, thing we would like to do is to look from a statistical point of view on trends, on short-term, long-term, mid-term behavior. We look for volatility. We look for ranges. And therefore, finally, we want to derive trading opportunities on different time frames. Also, we basically derive everything from, from H1, but looking to totally different kind of history. And um, yeah, that's uh, what we will do. And finally, we get a table as last week uh, with good trading opportunities. And um, as far as I realized from, from last week, yeah, some of those ideas really worked out. And let's see what we can do today within the next um, yeah, 30 minutes. It's only a short webinar and uh, looking to the name though. Looks quite international uh, if I look around. Um, so we have a couple of countries uh, here within the webinar. Before I really finally start, you know, the procedure, I have always to show up the risk disclaimer at least once uh, during um, a webinar. So we talk about trading, we talk about markets, trading opportunities, investments, everything like that. But finally, of course, if it comes to your own trading, you do everything uh, on your own. Um, and uh, I think that's quite self-explaining. I got already a question here, um, whether the webinar is recorded, um, of course, and uh, I will upload uh, after the webinar, or at least uh, in the afternoon, uh, I will upload the webinar to the JFD YouTube channel. And uh, then you can have a second view, if you like, to those tables showing around uh, here today within the webinar. I have just one slide, and then we can start with uh, charts and um, tables. Um, but I need that kind of slide in order to introduce you the different uh, meanings and time frames. So overall, we look really, we do a complete market overview uh, for Forex, Gold, DAX, and S&P 500. And that, as I mentioned, from a statistical point of view, um, so everything is derived purely with numbers, so there's no emotion, there's no um, meaning or, or opinion uh, from my end uh, in any of those calculations. So it's purely mathematically derived. So and we look for volatility trends, and um, especially in these days, it's quite uh, necessary to look to sideways behavior as well, because you know there are trading strategies which are quite suitable for sideways markets, and. Um, since not that many uh, pairs and, and underlying show good trend. So it's a good time to switch to those kind of uh, strategies as well. But we have some good trends as well. And we derive any trading possibilities on different time frames. And we look really to the complete picture. It's a multi time frame analysis, so to say. And just to introduce you the different numbers and the different meanings for any trade opportunity. So actually what I'm doing is I analyze everything on H1 and you, you may think, hey, and then still you say um, you can act on different time frames. And the answer is yes. Because I use some some um, indicators, some analysis on different periods. And with period, I don't mean uh, the period itself like H1 or M5. No, it's a number of candles. It's similar like if you have an EMA in your chart, then that EMA has a period. So if I talk about the 
120, that means I use the last 120 candles for any analysis, which is equivalent to one week. And that kind of analysis is suitable for a trading time frame between M5 and H1. And that's exactly what you can see in the lower right and table. And we have an, another analysis on 480, based on 480 uh, last candles, which uh, we present one month. And anything we conclude there would be suitable for H1 to H4 trading. And you see there are two other numbers, higher numbers, but uh, 1,560 means we look back one quarter and the last one, 6,240, we look back one year. And of course, if you look back that huge uh, time um, duration, then that is more suitable for trading on a higher time frame. And we're mentioning trading on that time frame does not actually mean it, uh, what chart you are looking, it's more meant how long you aim for the trade. So if you have a trade for just uh, looking, should be stop loss or take profit within the next two hours, of course, then uh, you would look for the, so the first line here. And so that is more the trade duration uh, you expect for the trade, uh, setting the right stop loss levels and take profits. And finally, the other table um, is that we have um, within our analysis numbers, but I don't show the real numbers. I just color code those numbers and the color I use is always the same. A very small number is red, a very high number is big. But now you have to keep in mind that we have indicators with um, positive values only, like for example ATR, average true range, which is an indicator for um, utility. Then very small means close to zero and very big is quite obvious but if it comes to for example trends then those trends might have a quite negative slope which would be maybe ideal for a short trade and then dark red means really negative and dark uh, green means quite high so positive trend so that's the meaning uh, we use within the later shown tables but now let's start with some some charts and uh, with charts, I don't mean uh, this one here. So we will not look really to the trading uh, um, charts uh, for different periods. No, that is one kind we can do for any, um, for looking for any trade opportunity. No, we will start with uh, some other charts and looking for historical behavior. And as always, I start with uh, that kind of chart, chart because it's telling you a lot about the current market situation, the current market state. And what's shown within the chart is a really long-term consideration for the ATR, the average true range, which is um, well, and good indicator for volatility. And in the following charts, I only look for uh, euro pairs. So starting with the euro and uh, second um, underlying is another currency like Australian dollar and so on. And looking to those seven pairs is always a good idea. We will discuss that uh, when it comes to, to regression, uh, when it comes to the slope within those charts, because you can combine uh, any kind of you derive and then come already to good conclusions. So, but looking to the overall volatility during the last 14 years, you can clearly realize that we are still at a very low end of volatility. Almost any, any underlying is um, showing up extremely low values. So we are really at a very low volatile market situation. I can only emphasize that kind of statement because it's quite important for any trading activity because uh, lots of trading strategies need volatility and we don't have volatility as we speak. So having that in mind is really important. So we should uh, slow down our activities uh, because of low volat volat volatility. It's not always exactly that kind of conclusion, but overall, 
uh, it's really uh, quite important. So now going back a little bit um, um, short term, a little bit more short term. So that's based on ATR uh, for one quarter, therefore this 1,560 in those charts. Then we can see something which is at least for me personally quite astonishing. Uh, the volatility of Euro US dollar, uh, which is normally not that low, is as we speak extremely low. So, um, and you will see that in the following charts as well. So we have a little bit higher volatility in Euro British pound that might be related to the still ongoing Brexit discussion. And the other one, which is uh, yeah, medium high is um, Euro New Zealand dollar. So going further down the road, smaller time frames, just looking back one, um, one month, uh, pictures are almost the same and uh, finally um, we can at least realize if you look back just one week uh, that volatility is increasing as we speak um, for all the pairs um, at least a little bit and um, yeah let's see what else we can draw of conclusions when it now comes to regression percent what does it mean regression percent is simply an indicator uh, showing the slope of a of a uh, of a chart so you can always you can always uh, draw a line uh, into for example the last 400 uh, candles and you can uh, fit the, that line uh, to the chart and then that line gets um, it's a slope and that slope is called regression percent because I look for all the numbers in percent in order to, co um, to really comp uh, compare the numbers of different underlines and what we can realize here for example looking back one quarter we have a quite low so negative number for um, Euro New Zealand dollar and for example the highest number we have for Euro um, uh, Japanese yen. What does it mean? Okay it means we have a good slope south in uh, New Zealand dollar and north in um, Japanese yen. It's a good thing now if you like that kind of time frame looking back one quarter then the combination of the two so doing a trade on New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, that would be the ideal trade because that would show the highest slope at all. And we will see that in the tables as well. So, um, and all the others um, yeah, are more or less uh, sidewards, at least looking back one quarter, looking back one month, a little bit different picture. Uh, US dollar goes south, um, and uh, Swiss Raw goes south, looking um, on, on that kind of time frame, and going north would be Australian dollar. And just so that you see another example, what does it mean with the low volatility? One can always show, uh, look, what kind of range um, and um, what kind of range is um, any underlying. Uh, showing for for the last period and uh, just a second I got another question here how we find slope regression as you show uh, simply calculating and I think um, that is uh, maybe you can do similar within a chart let me try to uh, to find a possibility um, showing that uh, so it it's a trend line but i think it's not fitted so you can just draw the line um okay so it would be this one here and then uh you can just draw the line and you would have to calculate the slope by your, by your own so what i use i use the historical data and do the analysis with uh, my own written computer programs but i think you will find an indicator if you search the, um, with google uh, you will find an indicator um, just look for a regression uh, then you you may use that kind of indicator within your chart Going back to the ranges, uh, you see the overall ranges on the long term are quite small 
but that is already indicated with a low volatility as well. And last thing I always uh, look for is a so-called regression coefficient. Uh, let me tell you what does it mean, regression coefficient. That is the quality of of the regression line. Uh, you may think, um, going back to the chart, uh, that kind of regression line we, we draw with a euro British pound is not that bad because um, it's really more or less fitting uh, here. But if I would draw the regression line, for example, for euro Swiss franc, um, it would be more or less uh, horizontal, but the the, the deviation from the line would be quite high and that is an indication that the quality of uh, the regression is not that good. So looking for a good trend trade, we need higher regression coefficients, uh, close to one, and that is what we should keep in mind when it comes to the tables in order to, to derive our conclusions. And um, going to those tables, I will show you. Um, we have one table for our findings and we will start with a really long-term consideration and now let me explain and i will draw uh, the conclusions here for um, uh, for you out of the given time frame so we start with looking back one year back and that is on the left hand side and you can see the atr is color coded and red means extremely low um, ATR value and the highest ATR, for example, we would have for DAX, uh, followed by uh, S&P 500 and gold. Just as one thing we have to keep in mind, the range is almost uh, small for any any kind of underlying. Um, what we can see uh, once again exceptions are DAX, S&P 500, and gold. Now. It comes to first conclusions about regression on a real long term. Um, the regression percent means that we have a quite low uh, negative slope, for example, in Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. Um, so that would be short candidates for a long term um, trade. And we have long candidates, and those I will indicate, for example, for the DAX going for uh, S&P 500 and going for uh, gold. So that are quite good long candidates. We, we will um, um, look for uh, the others are just on shorter periods. And now let's have a uh, look for the regression as well. And I mentioned a high number, which is dark um, green, is good because then there's a high quality of the trend. So looking on long-term behavior, we have high quality trends in DAX long, S&P 500 long, and gold long. So what would be other good candidates at least uh, with combination of high quality and good slope and that would be for example then this one because it's red on regression percent that means slope goes south and we have um, a high quality so and that we have here as well and we have here as well so that would be short candidates on a long uh, term behavior and we have no um, double green uh, so no um, long which uh, is showing up as that kind of behavior as well so then let's go one time frame down so looking back one quarter and um, starting with ATR as we know once again DAX S&P 500 not that high more than neutral uh, behavior and um, gold once again high so looking to the regression once again we have a quite good behavior in s p 500 and for ducks it's not that good because we have only light green here but let's show the combination where we have at least um 
Uh, the regression coefficient, by the way, is not that good here, but anyhow, the trend is uh, quite well. But let's look for a combination where we have green, um, oh, quality was quite good, sorry, my mistake. We have a next uh, short candidate here uh, on that time frame, and um, we have another one here, and we have another one here uh, with a high quality of trend and um, yeah the rest is not that good and no long uh, trade um, possibility okay then let's go down the road one step back in the time frame um, ATR is always the same picture and we have once again for uh, a good behavior on gold a good behavior here for s p 500 and a good behavior here and now let's look once again for the combination high regression coefficient and um an extreme slope that would be red or green so it would be here here and um, here not that good but okay uh let's Put it that way and uh, we would have a short here as well but not that high and where do we have good trends here that would be a quite good short opportunity and here another short one as well and now final summary for looking back one week and um, yeah volatility not that good uh, as we know and let's go start uh, uh, once again with gold uh, quite well regression high regression percent high so we have a good slope north so long and good quality as well so that would be good but now we have here a short and that's not uh, for, for S&P 500, um, yeah, everybody knows what happened uh, last week. So, and we would have a short here as well. And now do we have other things? Uh, we have a short here and we have a good, good, good. Do we have one as well? Mm, not that good, but here we have a short. And now we can draw our conclusions uh, in order to look um, for, for possibilities for uh, trades. And obviously, if we have, for example, three times short here, then this would be a quite well short uh, candidate. So this one would be good and it would be a short trade uh, for Australian dollar, um, Swiss franc. Um, so we have on three out of four time frames uh, a signal going short so that would be really a nice short candidate um not that good here but not that bad for euro swiss franc and now let's have a look to uh to others so other shorts have only two entries therefore i don't use those and yeah it's a little bit critical now um, with uh, S&P 500. Uh, let's have a view on that. So we have on as anything a long term or on short term we have short and long term we have long, long three times long. And honestly, maybe that's even the best situation we might uh, we could have. So we have an overall good trend upwards, and the short in the last. Uh, entry here simply would mean hey we we have a pull uh, we have a pullback so we 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 went south out of our north trend so now starting with a new long um uh, that's not that bad uh bad idea so uh therefore i like that uh but going long as well so it's not so we have three uh, opportunities and now going really into the chart looking um, 
for for the right entry at the right time frame the trade duration hmm. that's up to you uh to 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 have that kind of conclusions but now since i mentioned uh it's good to have a view on cyber markets as well we will use um we will look to that a little bit differently we we use now with a regression percent in one table and um we have the different time frames in one table obviously uh, the, the numbers uh, are the same as in all the other tables uh, but uh, now we just compare only regression percent which means do we have a slope and if yes or no so for example oh i forgot uh, the gold long uh, as a good candidate uh, here as well um well, i came to that conclusion yeah out of that table as well so on all the different time frames i have green entries only one uh, with a um, with a light green so therefore i like it now what i'm here looking is once again do i have one color at all and that's more or less what we have done already but now let's, let's have a look for the yellow yellow would mean well, that is a um, this a slope is close to zero so that is sidewards and for example we have two entries here with um, the yellow for um, new zealand dollar so that would be a candidate for sidewards and let's have a look whether we can find similar things for others uh, with two yellow entries and we have one here and we have one here and that are all the one with two yellows so um that's not that bad because now we have three uh, markets which are extremely sidewards at least on uh, the time frames uh, looking back one week and looking back one month so if you have a strategy which is quite suitable there uh, and suitable strategies for that are those who act with rebuys uh, because then you don't want to have a strong trend into one direction <laughs> and even if your trade goes to minus you would do a rebuy be careful with that use stop loss as always for that kind of uh, trade um, uh, strategy but um, you can use it and those uh, are extremely good in sidewards because you don't want to have a, a strong move in one direction because then you automatically would hit your stop loss for those kind of uh, um, trading strategies so yeah that are the conclusions so we have good sidewards as well so that would be those ones here and so now it's time for a wrap up in order to um to to get everything up and running here uh for for trade analysis and um we have uh, two long candidates s p 500 and uh, gold and we have a couple of shorts which are uh, i should use not here uh, the yellow uh, let's uh, look uh, let's go here for something else uh, for the sidewards then uh, it's easier with the final table so we have shorts uh, for uh, australian dollars uh, swiss franc same for australian uh, for euro swiss franc so i would decide only for one uh, in order to be not that exposed to um, swiss franc and uh, there was another another short no uh, that is the other are suitable for sidewards. That's exactly the, our conclusion from today. And everything, not with any meaning, not looking to the chart and interpretate. Uh, no, it's just derived by numbers, purely mathematically. And uh, that's good because that is automatically objective. And that's exactly what I'm always aiming for. And I hope you like those kind of conclusions. But finally, trades, as mentioned, are mm -hmm. for your own. If you have interest in those tables, no problem. Uh, you can drop me a note um, and I will send you all the tables. And let me uh, once again show my email address. That is 
friedrichowski at uh, jfdbank.com. And um, if you like, um, but please don't forget to send me an email to that email address because everything you write down in the chat, it's gone after I close the webinar and then I don't have any, any um, reminder for that. Okay, um, that's for today. See you again, hopefully, and um, have a good time. Have a good day and keep in mind, I think today evening uh, we have uh, the Fed interest rate decision. So everything around uh, US dollar, be careful, but I think you know that. Um, and um, just as a um, remark, uh, all the tables I showed up here are in LibreOffice. They are um, not direct in Excel, Excel, but you may open them in Excel as well. Otherwise, um, just install LibreOffice. It's quite suitable, uh, you will see. Okay, that's for now. Enjoy the day. Have a good time. Bye-bye.